All right, you are uh, seeing this because you've clicked on the help button for the swale, which is example problem number one at the end of the user's manual. Um, I'm going to briefly go over the problem statement and then I will step through how to solve this problem using, using the model. So first we're dealing with a 0.1 acre retention swale. We're serving a 1.1 acre highway project. We're located in Liberty County, which is southwest of Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, our existing land use conditions are agricultural and pasture. We have a non-DCIA curve number of 80 and 0% DCIA. The post-development land use condition is highway with a non-DCIA curve number of 85 and 50% DCIA. Uh, we want to uh, see if our swale will meet 80% uh, nutrient load reduction and we're going to assume that a additional concentration reduction is achieved due to the fact that there is very low longitudinal slope. I'll go over the, uh, uh, the, the parameters for the swale uh, in just a moment when I get to it, but first let's uh, start navigating through the model. So when you open your model, you should see a page that looks like this. You're, um, you're, you're going to have the different help options here and, and down here, and then you should see a button at the very top that says click here to start. So we'll click here and we'll start. And that brings us to um, our general site information page. So the first thing that we want to do is just in case maybe we used the model previously and we've, we didn't reset our, our input data, is we're going to click on the reset input for stormwater treatment analysis. So I'm going to click on that now. And then, yes, I want to delete all the previous input data. And then so that'll go through and it'll reset every, everything within the model. This way we know that we're starting from a, a, a scratch and, and, and a blank problem. So the, after we've reset everything, uh, the first thing that we're going to want to do is we want to input the name of the project. So for this, we're dealing with example problem number one. So. Oops. So I'm going to just input that data there. So I have example problem one. Uh, the next thing you want to do is we want to select our meteorological zone. So what we'll do is go to the uh, view zone map button right here. So I'm going to click on that. And that takes us to a picture of the state. And you can see uh, it's color coded for the different um, zones that we have. Let me shrink that so it can fit better. But you can see here we have um, zone one up in the panhandle area. Um, we have zone two going through the central part of the state, and there's also a little area here. Um, zone three uh, we have down in uh, Keys area. Um, zone four is up along the west coast and a little bit up in Jacksonville. Um, and, zo and zone five down in the southeast part of the state. So for, for our area, we're um, southwest of um, Tallahassee, so we're over here, which is in zone one. So now once we have identified our zone, we're going to go back to our general site information sheet. So we'll click on the button and go back. And then from here, we'll um, select our, our drop-down button, and now we know we're in zone one. The next thing we need to do is specify our mean annual rainfall. So again, we have uh, provided mean annual rainfall maps on this page. So we'll click on the button here and that sends us to, um, a, you know, again, another picture of the state. Um, we're, we're dealing with the, the panhandle area, so just in order to, to zoom in on that, we want to look at the um, northwest region. So I'm going to click on the expand view for the northwest region. And then so again, we're um, over here in, in Liberty County, just kind of south southwest of Tallahassee here. And if we um, look at our, our line here, uh, we're, we're at about 60 inches. So that's the value that, that we're going to use. So now we can go directly to general site information by clicking on the button. So we'll go back and then we're going to input our, our 60 inches here. Okay, um, so now the type of analysis that we're going to do, we have a drop down option so you can choose between either net improvement, which basically means that we want our post development conditions to uh, be equal to or less than our pre development conditions. 
Uh, we can input a specified removal efficiency, um, so if we had a target removal efficiency that we wanted to get, or if we just wanted to do an analysis of BMPs and we're not too concerned with uh, uh, achieving any goals, we just want to see how well a particular BMP performs. So for this problem, we have a, a specified removal efficiency that we want to try to achieve, which is 80%. I'm going to input those numbers now. Now, um, note that you can specify a, a different removal efficiency for both um, nitrogen and phosphorus if, if uh, so desired. So the, the box on the left is for nitrogen and the box on the left is for phosphorus removal. Okay, so now we've in input everything we need on this page. So we're, now we're going to move on and we're going to define our watershed characteristics. So what we'll do is click on the Go to Watershed Characteristics button, and that'll bring us over to that page. So uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to take a look at uh, what type of configuration we have for this problem. So for, for this problem, we only have a single catchment. So if we go, we can look at all of the different options for the different catchments. Uh, you can scroll to the right, there's a bunch here, and then I can also scroll down and there's a, and there's a few more options. Uh, there's a total of uh, 14 different um, configurations, catchment configurations that can be specified. Um, but for this problem, we're just dealing with a single catchment, so which is option A. So now I'm going to go back to the watershed characteristics button uh, and, and go to, the, to, the, to this worksheet. So now I'm going to select from the drop-down menu the uh, single catchment A, which is our uh, catchment configuration. Um, next, I'll specify our, our pre-development and our post-development land use conditions. Um, so the, the, these were uh, information given in the problem. Um, however, this is information that, that you would get from um, your, your, your site analysis. So uh, for our pre-development condition, we're looking at agricultural pasture, so I'll select that. And for our post-development condition, we're dealing with the highway, so I'll select highway. Um, our site area was 1.1 acres, so uh, we we'll put 1.1 acres for, for both. So this is our pre-development uh, catchment area and then our post-development um, catchment area. And then our uh, pre-development non-DCIA curve number uh, was specified as 80. Um, we have 0% uh, uh, DCIA uh, percentage. Then our post-development non-DCIA curve number was 85. Uh, so typically there's a little bit of site compaction that occurs during construction, so it's, it's, it's fairly common to see a, a slight increase in curve number. And then our post-development DCIA percentage has been increased up to 50%. And then the uh, estimated area of the um, BMP um, is 0.1 acres. Okay, and so and that just means what's the what's what's the footprint of your of your BMP that you're using? So in this case, it's a swale, um, and we have a, a 0.1 acre swale. Um, so now we have all of our uh, catchment um, defined. Um, notice that on this page, it also shows us our pre-development um, nitrogen loadings and phosphorus loadings, and then it also gives us our post-development nitrogen and phosphorus loadings, and these are in um, kilograms per year. Um, I, I would also like to point out that um, there's, there's an option to either use the default concentrations that are, that are specified uh, or, or hard programmed into the, into the model, or um, you can also overwrite your default concentrations and specify your own um, EMC values for both nitrogen and phosphorus, and that would be done in these, in these boxes right here. Uh, for our problem, that we're not um, dealing with that, so we'll move, uh, we'll move on to the next part uh, of our problem, which is analyzing our BMP. So what I'll do now is I'll select Go to Stormwater Treatment Analysis. From this page, you can see it, it shows what our required treatment efficiency is that, that we need to get. So that was 80%, which we uh, said earlier in the problem. And then also it shows a picture here of the catchment configuration that we have selected. So again, for this instance, we're only dealing with a single catchment, but this is a good uh, catch for you. So you, if you know you have multiple catchments and it only shows a picture like this, then um, you need to go back and, and change that um, in the watershed uh, characteristics worksheet. 
Also on here, you have the option to select from all of the different BMPs that the, that the model analyzes, um, as well as go to the um, summary of, of the results. So for this one, again, we're dealing with swale, so I'm going to click on the swale button. Um, so from here, you can see we have up to four different catchments um, that can be entered. Uh, we only have one catchment for ours, so we're only going to be working in um, catchment one. So for this catchment, um, we have a, a swale top width of 10 feet. Um, we're going to do a triangular swale, so the bottom width is zero. Our swale length is 871 feet, and it is going alongside of a highway, which is also 871 feet. Um, our, our highway width, um, including the shoulder, is um, 20 feet. And then the average width of pervious area is 40 feet. Um, next, we have our, our swale slope. So this is our longitudinal slope um, of our swale, and that's 0 .001. Um, and then our Manning's roughness coefficient is 0 0.05. Uh, we have a soil infiltration rate of uh, 5 inches per hour, and then also our side slope of, of the swale is 5. And, and what that side slope is, is that's this Z value right here, so the, the, the side of, of, your, of your swale. Um, we don't have a swale block on this one, however, um, since we have such a, a low longitudinal slope, um, we are going to take credit for additional concentration removal, and you do that simply by selecting yes from the drop-down button here. And again, you can do that for each of the individual catchments. Um, so once I enter all of that in, you can see from the retention curve down here, uh, this shows you about what your efficiency is going to be. Looks like we're going to be getting around um, 60%. Um, however, since we're getting additional concentration reduction due to, due, due to low slope, um, we're, we're actually going to be getting about 73% for nitrogen and about 67% for um, phosphorus. Now, um, some of that uh, additional concentration reduction that's achieved is, is due to the settling of particles as that water flows through the swale. Um, as well as the vegetation in the swale that may uptake some nutrients as, as the water um, moves through. So now that we've insert, input all of the data for our swale, uh, we're ready to um, see the summary of our analysis. So if I click uh, go to stormwater treatment analysis, okay, and it brings us back to this page, and then we're going to go to catchment and treatment summary results. Okay. And then if you look on here, you see we have all four of our catchments on the top. Um, so again, we're in catchment one. It gives us our project title above that. Um, you have the option to do as many as three BMPs in each catchment, um, and, and they will all be listed here. Um, and then also here, it, it gives a summary of our catchment configuration, as well as a picture of it as well, the date that the model was ran. Um, and then it'll also show us our target load reduction, so we wanted to get 80%. And then what we actually achieved, which was 73 and 68%. Um, in addition, it'll show us our discharged load um, that we achieved um, in both kilograms per year and also pounds per year for both nitrogen and phosphorus. And it'll also give us our load removed. And again, kilograms per year and pounds per year for nitrogen and phosphorus. Let me increase the size of that just a little bit. Um, th this information is important for uh, TMDL requirements. Um, so uh, so that it's convenient that it summarizes everything here. Um, notice, though, that we don't achieve our efficiency of 80% here. So one of the things we can do is go back and change uh, some of the characteristics of our swale, for example, go from a triangular section to a trapezoidal section. Um, so if I wanted to just real quick go and do that, it's very quick. So go back to stormwater treatment analysis, and then I can go back to the swale button. And then instead of a zero down here, let's say we have a, uh, a, a two-foot um, uh, bottom. That looks like we get close. Let's say we have a, a three-foot bottom width down there. 
And then if we go back to the stormwater treatment analysis and then our catchment and treatment summary results, we see that we do get it for nitrogen and we're close for phosphorus. So again, that just shows you how you can quickly and easily modify your, um, your, your BMP design so that you're able to achieve your, your target reduction.